All right, so in this video, let's add automatic line numbers or row numbers to our invoice. We basically want something here that's gonna say one, two, three, four, five for all these items. And again, as usual, we want this to work if we add new rows, delete rows and stuff like that. Similar to how we did total prices and sum and all of that. If you're not familiar how this is done, you can watch my invoice template video for additional information. But in this one, I'm just gonna concentrate on row numbers. Now the first part is gonna be the painful part is adding some space here for the row numbers. So I'm gonna just take care of that by adding a column. And for now, I'm just gonna copy this column header so we get the formatting and all of that. I will also just do a format painter on this to get the line. Well, maybe the line is for this one. Yeah, I'll probably keep the notes over here. That's fine. I am going to just call this line. So this other line, let me take care of this too. Now we want this to go one, two, three, four. So what I'm gonna do, again, I need to kind of walk you through this. So I'm gonna add a couple of columns here so I can explain how this is supposed to work. And then we'll just place our formula where it needs to go. So for this, I'm gonna use the function row. So to explain you how that works, if I do row, just select, for example, this area and close parentheses. If I had enter right now, it just gives me 18, which is the current row number. Now I want this to work as an array formula, so it works with this range. So I'm gonna do control shift enter or command shift enter to put array formula wrapper around this. And I'm gonna hit enter. And we got 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. As you can see, that just returns the row number. Now the good thing about this, if we go here and add, for example, a row, it will automatically adjust these to the current row numbers, right? So, and if I delete this, it will also again adjust to the row number. Now the problems that we have with this, first we need to make sure that if we add above this, it is going to work as well. And if we add below this, that's going to work as well, which is where we're gonna again use offset function to take care of this. But the other problem there is with this is that this is not supposed to be 18. This is supposed to be one. So this should have been one, two, three, four, five. So how could I do that? So basically it should be 18 minus 17, right? So if I take all of that and do minus 17 in here and hit enter, still inside of that array formula, let me just zoom in a tiny bit here. See, it gives us one, two, three, four, five. So that's pretty good. So I want this to be a little more dynamic. So what I did, I just basically set minus 17 from all of those pro numbers. So that adjusted to go one, two, three, four, five. Now, what is that 17? That 17 is basically the row number for our headers, this thing on top. So instead of saying 17, I'm just gonna say, take the row number of this, which is our header in B17. So that should give us 17. And if we hit enter, we'll get this, but it will be more dynamic, tied to the header, so it's not hard-coded 17 in there. So with this, we got one, two, three, four, five. Now the thing we have to do here, we have to use offset to make sure that works one line below this header and one line above this last cell. So that way, when we add and remove rows, it still works the same way. So this is where instead of using this hard-coded range, instead of B18, I'm going to replace that with offset function. And in offset function, we're gonna do three parameters. So the first one is gonna be the cell right above the first row. So in this case, that's B17. And from that B17, I need to go one row down, so comma one, and I need to stay in the same column. So that's gonna be zero columns, offset from the current cell, which means if I hit enter right now, I'm gonna get the same results with this offset. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this B22. Instead of using B22, I'm gonna do another offset function here. 
And for this one, we're gonna say one cell above this notes thing. So that will be B23 minus one to go one row up, zero to stay in the same column. Hit enter. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five. Again, the same thing because we're basically just doing dynamic range. And again, we want to move this formula out of the way of this range. So I want this to be a formula where I have the header on top and all of this goes below. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna convert this to an array formula. I mean, it's already an array, but I'm just gonna add an array in here by adding a curly bracket in the beginning here and curly bracket all the way in the end here. And right before I do this calculations, I'm gonna add the row header on top here by adding another row. So I'm gonna say line, which is the header that's supposed to be like this thing over here. Semicolon to add a new row in this array and hit enter. And you'll see how it says line one, two, three, four, five. It's not placed correctly because this should be one above, but that gives us what it needs to give us. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back and cut this and just go to where this says line, remove that line and paste it over here. So something is wrong here. Let me go check why this didn't work. Oh, there's an extra space above. Okay, let's get rid of that, hit enter. And there we go, line one, two, three, four, five. So this works. Now let's check what happens now when we placed our formula here in the header. So if I add a line here above, see that now is line one. And this should work because of the previous formula I did. And then again, if we add in the middle, even if we add it over here, it should shift this whole thing and go one, two, three, four, five. And then the same thing goes if we go below this thing, right? So yeah, we got eight. So all of that works just fine. So this is pretty good. I would be happy with this and I probably would leave it exactly the way it is right now. I would probably just uh, move this one, two, three, four, five. Maybe we'll just align it differently. Maybe like this or maybe left align. I don't know, whatever you want to do with your styling, that's up to you. Now, another thing you could potentially do is do this until the last line. So instead of having one, two, three, four, five, you could get this one, two, three and stop it at that. So there are a couple of ways to go about this. One way you could do this, you could say if the quantity is blank, then let's not put the line number in here. Now that could kind of be weird sometimes if you decide to skip a line. And then if you said, if the quantity is blank, then not do it. It will basically just go one, two, and then four, instead of going one, two, three, four. So I want to do this in a way that it goes one, two, three, four, until the last line that something is entered. In this case, by the last line, I will say until the last quantity. So what we need to do, we need to find the position where the last line number is. So let me just change this for a second to something like this. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So I'm gonna take this formula for a second here. That can stay where it is. I'm gonna copy that and paste it over here someplace. And that's still gonna give me that one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna remove the header for the time being and replace this array with just the row function, remove this curly bracket, hit enter. So that now just gives me one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I want to do now, I want to basically do some sort of logical statement in addition to this to check if the quantity is blank or not. So let's just do that separately. So I'll just go right next to this and say, is this range equal to double quotes? So is it blank? If I do command shift enter for an array, hit enter. So basically it gives us trues and falses. Now I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say, is it not equal to blank? So if I hit enter, now we get true, true. Basically these are not blank, this is blank and so on. The blanks are now false. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take that true and false, this array that I have right here, and I'm going to just do parentheses around this and multiply it by this range over here, which is that row numbers I have on the left. See, because we had true and falses, 
in multiplication, trues evaluate to one and falses evaluate to zero. So basically we take the row numbers and we multiply it by either one or zero. So if it's blank, it's gonna multiply it by zero, so we're gonna get a zero. If it's not blank, we're gonna multiply by the row number as one, so we're gonna get the same row number returned back to us. Now, I need to do a bunch of changes to this because I need this to work in more efficient way by using all of those offset formulas inside. So instead of using like this right here, I'm gonna go back to this formula and copy this row function, hit escape, Go back to this, and instead of doing this, I will just paste that whole thing. And if I hit enter, I should be getting, well, I should be getting the same results, but I'm not because we probably have to do parentheses. So yeah, so let's just put this whole thing in parentheses from here through here. Should be getting the same results because we don't have to worry about order of operations. So there we go, one, two, zero, four, zero, zero. Okay, so that's good. So now I need to also replace this D18 to D23 with some offset functions. So D18 is gonna become an offset function, which is basically gonna be D17, one row down and zero columns left and right. So that should return the same thing. And finally D23, I'm gonna replace with one cell up from this bottom cell. So again, offset, and we'll take that bottom cell, which should be D24. Go one row up, minus one, and zero to stay in the same column. Still getting the same thing. So now I don't need this. Let's get rid of that. Let's delete this column. So this is closer. So I got this one, two, zero, four, zero, zero. Now I want to just convert this to four. So I want to just get what is the line number that's the last one. So to get the last line number, we can just get the highest number from these numbers because we have this one, two, then this is zero, this is four, these are zeros. So four is gonna be the highest number. So I can just take this whole thing and put it inside of the max function like this. And we got the four. So what does the four mean now? Basically it means if we go and add a number here, that's gonna go to five. And let's just change it to a different number so it's not confusing. If I remove this, keep this blank and go to this cell, add one, you'll see it says six because line six is the last line. So now I got this where I can get my last line number using this pretty crazy array formula. So the final step is gonna be to use that line number to say where we should populate this and where we should not. Again, let me just grab this row numbers part out of here, hit escape, go back here, and let's just paste this and put a array formula so we can kind of see what's going on here. So basically we want to create a formula with a combination of this formula and this formula to limit this up to four tons of different ways you could do this. We could use an if function, we could do another offset function, I guess. Uh, let's just do an if statement. I guess that would be easier at this point. So I'm gonna take this max function without the array formula because we need only one array formula, copy this. And I'm gonna say basically, let's just build an if statement. I'm gonna say if, and I'll just take this whole range. And I'm gonna say if that is greater than the max row, which is pasting that max function, comma, then we wanna leave it blank. So double quotes. Otherwise, we would like to return that. Close parentheses. And again, this should be an array formula. So let me just do control shift enter around this, hit enter, and you see how I got one, two, three, four. I don't want this to be connected to this range though. And that range is basically being returned with this function, right? This thing. So I'm gonna just copy that without array formula, hit escape, go back to this function and basically just replace this range inside of this if statement with that function, paste, and this range with that second function, paste. And I know this formula is a little long and I can't zoom in more on this. So that will be a little difficult to read probably. So you're gonna have to watch on a larger screen but I don't have a lot of room to work with because it's a little too long. So I got this formula that gives me one, two, three, four. 
So the last step is to add this header on top of this. So I'll go back to this, take this entire formula, and add a curly bracket here in the beginning, and add another curly bracket right here before the array formula closing. And then I'll add the column name, line, semicolon to add another row, hit enter. So we got line one, two, three, four. So at this point, we'll take this crazy formula, cut it out, go back to this formula and replace this formula with this formula. And we got our one, two, three, four. So basically now the way this should work, if I go here, for example, and delete a line, see that three disappeared too, because now this is the last number. So let's just add a row on top of this, just for testing. See, one, two, three, very nice. So we can go here and add our quantities and prices. Works well. If we skip a line and we type some item here, you see how this works. Apparently there is some formatting issue that needs to be addressed, but other than that, that should be fine. So let's try to do one below. That works just fine. And I'm adding in the middle. I can add, I can delete. My line numbers will adjust. And we're gonna get things until the last one. So if I go here and clear this in the middle, that should also clear all of those. So I'll just keep this simple. I'll just put this item one, we'll do item one, two, three. And again, this is not adding this here because we're basing this on the quantity column. So you could base it on description column if you wanted to, you can adjust your formula, but I'm just gonna keep it with quantity because for me, if I'm entering quantity, that is being invoiced. If there's no quantity, we're not really invoicing anything. Some totals here. And finally, let's just test to make sure this whole thing fits. I have a bunch of extra columns I need to delete that I forgot about. This one too. Let's try this again. So file print, portrait. I think that's pretty good. If you really want this company, all this stuff to line up with this, you need to merge the cells. So something like this. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.